Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we're doing a retrospective review of From Beyond. Humans are such easy prey. Directed by Stuart Gordon, starring Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, Ken Foray, and Ted Sorrell. This movie's about a couple scientists who have created the Resonator, a machine that utilizes vibrations to unlock a sixth sense, or the third eye. If you're in the proximity and the machine is turned on, you see flying crazy eels, and you get boners, and you get horny, and your skin turns into plasticine, it seems. And after a night of terror, Jeffrey Combs' character is accused of killing his friend. And now him, a psychiatrist, and a detective are trying to get to the bottom of the resonator. This is a Baller Club recommendation from my favorite librarian, other than AEW's Leva Bates, Bug. Bug is a longtime supporter of the channel. I had the opportunity to actually meet up with her in person at Texas Frightmare. We were super hammered, and she's a blast in the glass, that's for sure. And she also recommended this movie, which a lot of other people have recommended before. And I'm shocked that we're finally getting to it. So thank you, Bug. I needed more Barbara Crampton in my life. Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, reanimate a reunion with Stuart Gordon. I'm for it. What do we like? Well, I like the cast. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just mentioned it, but I like the cast. I really liked Ken Foray as, like, Bubba, the ex-football player, like, cop. I'm Sergeant Buford Brown, but my teammates call me Bubba. He was level-headed, he was entertaining, and he had some of the best reactions. And the fact that he ran around in a little orange Speedo. And he just, like, straight up, like, knows exactly what this resonator does. He's like, hey man, I had a boner. Well, how about the hard on I got? Is there a statistical correlation for that too? And so he like gets to the bottom of what's really happening. He knew enough that like, this is dangerous, especially in the wrong hands. Barbara, I'm looking at you. And like everyone else did like a fantastic job. Like Jeffrey Combs was great in this film as well because his character was just like, you felt bad for him, you rooted for him. There was just like so much depth and level to who he was. He just delivered. Off his head, like a gingerbread man. The second his wig splits, whew, I'm telling you, he's a crazy boy. His acting like through and through was solid. Jeffrey Combs, the way that he tried to express himself and how much truth you could see just looking in his eyes. The same reason why Barbara Crampton was like, we need to go revisit this site because I believe this guy. I think this was likely one of his best performances, if not like, would you rather? It's between this and that. Barbara Crampton, of course, crushed it. Although she was a little more daring than the rest as you would be if you knew you had a massive vibrator upstairs. I have to see more, feel more. She just wakes up from a cold sweat like, well, I could really use a good vibration right now. And she goes and flicks a switch and causes a lot of turmoil in the house. I, I think one of my favorite moments is they need to like leave the house and like Ken For is like, we gotta go. And he like goes to Barbara like, you wanna change or you wanna go out like that? And like he leaves, he sets everything up. And then when he comes back, like she's totally in the like bondage outfit. And you know you're gonna get that great reaction out of like Ken Forey. And he just like delivers it exactly what you expect. I told you to get dressed. Well, you were waiting for the reaction. I was waiting for the reveal. I really appreciated how Barbara Crampton looked in this film. Also the nighty that got ripped to shreds by that weird plasticine boy with the long fingers. What the hell? Which leads into my next like, which is obviously the practical effects. If you've seen any Stuart Gordon film that has Brian Yuzna involved, there's crazy good practical effects. This team is just fantastic with the way that skin looks. Like, it's just so creepy. Like, when you first see Jeffrey Combs, like, touch the shoulder, and you're like, okay, what's going on? Even just, like, the practical creatures, like, it just looked so good. This is one of those movies that, if you watch with the group, is really fun because you know what you would do, and the characters seem competent enough, but they just aren't doing the right things. Ken Foray straight up was like in the middle of figuring something out and he was like, All this talking about eating is making me hungry. Uh, how about we have some dinner, huh? <laughs> you know what? I'm hungry. I'm gonna make these weird ass shepherd's pies or whatever the fuck they were. It just like does a quick shot of that and you're like, did they eat it or not? Like it didn't show an eating scene. It just cuts to Barbara Crampton sleeping at her desk and these two creeps are just mm, staring at her while she sleeps. 
this isn't the best use of your time. Figure out the goddamn machine. Don't just watch a girl sleeping. But Jeffrey Combs loved her. I completely get that. When I met Barbara Crampton, I was very panicked. I didn't get a From Beyond print sign because of the dominatrix thing because I thought it was too saucy. I was like super nervous. There was like a whole table. It's like, which one do you want? Usually it's a handler that asks you that, but when she says that, you don't want to say the the sexiest one. You want to go for something more reserved. So I went Sunchoke, which is such an obscure movie. I did really enjoy that one, but like when I grabbed it, she's like, really? No one at any convention has ever got a Sunchoke photo signed by her. I was the first one in history because it was the most wholesome. Right beside that was her like laying on a table, getting eaten out by a head, or her dressed as a dominatrix, both of which I would love. I went for the wholesome one because I was so intimidated and terrified. <laughs> I forget where I was going with this. I just wanted to share that. Check out Sunchoke. Oh, my whole point was, of course, Jeffrey Combs is gonna love Barbara. Everyone loves Barbara. Even though this film had like, Unreal practical effects. I kind of liked our eels and jellyfishes. Very like Ghostbuster-esque. I would disagree. At least you knew that they were done practically and poorly composited into a scene as opposed to made in CG. They wanted to make it seem like the beyond. They're all around us. We just don't know until the switch is flipped. Are there a bunch of fucking demon spermy motherfuckers <laughs> flying around my head right now? Is that why it was trending the other day? Did you see demon sperm? No. Was trending in the US the other day. I knew Glory Hole was trending at one point. That was Canada. That's a weird one too. <laughs> but yes, Demon Sperm was also trending. So maybe everybody just got a hold of From Beyond. <laughs> Fuck yeah. We didn't really talk about one person in particular, and that is our villain. You know, the, the guy doctor, that is from the, beyond. That is from beyond. He has tons of different like forms and he looks amazing. Absolutely. All the transformations spot on and well done. What was your favorite form? My favorite form was his big neck little head boy. You didn't like perfectly like shaven. That was uh, just a normal hair? form. That was perfectly like line shaven chest hair. Well, he's just a guy that looks slimy. He looked like Danny DeVito in It's Always Sunny when he came out of the couch. I would say Bat Boy. Come and get me, unit! Oh, the flying one? Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Mobile. I did like also snake heads coming out of foreheads. And I like the idea of the, the third eye coming to actual fruition. You know that they're trying to figure out the different parts of the brain that aren't necessarily used for anything and they're trying to utilize that. And that's the whole point of the resonator. And they vibrate your, your brain so much that it sprouts this little seed dick thing that pops out your forehead. But I like that like before it actually happens, you can see like the pulsing on Jeffrey's head. You can even see when Barbara Crampton first wakes up, she was like horny in her sleep, but also grabbing her head. My horny meter's going off, I better do something about this. And I love that weird aspect of it. Remember when he was eating brains? Crawford, please don't eat those. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. I meant to mention this when we were talking about like the doctor's crazy form. I really liked when he was like chasing everyone and you saw like the arms <laughs> like moving. I just like how like these prosthetics are shot. I think it just looks cool when you get to see this like big hunking piece of material because who knows what it actually is. Hunking? Hunking. I think you mean hulking. He He's hunking. not a hunk. He looks like Mal Bolgia from Spawn with a weird neck. Hunking. He's not the Zac Efron of the fucking Stuart Gordon world. Look at what he's doing with the, that bondage video. He's got all the pull. Is that my next form, John? So in COVID, I gained like 20 pounds. Maybe I need to like just start amassing plasticine skin. So not only am I just soft now, but maybe I get even softer and I become just a fucking malleable piece of loving flesh. A little pillow boy. Little pillow boy. Catch me at the next Texas Frightmare in 2022 probably. I'll be fucking fleshy as fuck, boy. Now what didn't we like? I mentioned this earlier, but I didn't like the idea of just like switching from, I really need to figure this out to, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go spend six hours and make some fucking shepherd's pie for the whole gang. Even though I know it was like a super quick shot, there were scenes like that where they're staying in this house that obviously has some very fucked up shit. You would think they would just leave sometimes and not spend the night there, especially if they know that in their sleep they're getting up and potentially turning on these machines because that happened like night one, but then they still stayed. I feel accelerated. 
We almost died. There's a few plot points if you want to get real nitpicky, like when they return to the house the second time, they literally just escaped the hospital. You got Barbara Crampton like in a gown and then she's magically in her red like, turtleneck. And like Jeffrey Combs, he decides to put on the paramedic jacket. Why not? Like there's no time to change outfits. You're right, they were both in vans. They pull up to the house at like the same time and now they're wearing different things. Jeffrey Combs, I get. Yeah, he's because just, he could just grab a coat that was in the passenger seat. But there's no way Barbara Crampton could have gone from gown to red turtleneck with a sweet blazer on. And really, for being honest, who gives themselves like five minutes to blow up a machine? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, yeah. I know that these are not necessarily dislikes, it's more just like, what the fuck is going on here? If I had an axe and I'm coming for that machine, Ken Foray, I get it. You don't want me to hit the machine. Just let me hit the machine. It would have solved all your problems. And imagine you're a detective. And then we have the psychiatrist, and they brought Jeffrey Combs, who was in a mental institute at the time. They brought him to the house, and they just, like, went and did their own thing, and they forgot about him. And had the opportunity to get a fucking axe, and could have murdered them if he wasn't so slapstickly loud with his actions. If he wasn't screaming and wailing an axe, he could have murdered these people, and they wouldn't have even known because they were so oblivious to him even leaving the group to get an axe. Wild. Again, I don't want to have to keep reiterating this, but I seem to have to every retrospective this isn't a criticism of the film itself, we just want to talk about it. Thank you. Can't wait to hear it in the comments below. These fucking 20 year old hipsters. This hair wasn't tied up five minutes ago. It's just hot in here and it's getting in my eyes all sweaty. He said it was a hair spitz. I don't like the man bun either. Or whatever. That's not even a... I don't know. That's the pebbles. That's not a man bun. That's a fucking... Olsen twins full house shit. I don't care what age you are if you review 80s movies. If you are six years old, maybe your parents might have an issue, but I don't have an issue. <laughs> Fucking nobody's age gating around here, so stop age gating us. Please, let us talk about the shit we like. We're almost 40 year old men. Don't tell them. We're young boys. I'm wearing a baseball hat to prove it. How do you do, fellow kids? Back to the movie, I think Ken Foray's death was kind of odd. I liked it the way that he died, but his prosthetics were subpar. He looked like a T-Rex that fell over and was melted somehow. I think it was the best, because you totally knew that he was just like laying down in like a floor and just like popped your head out. They like made his arms super massive just so they can melt it down. So you can see like these bulging biceps. When you're working at the death spa, you know you got them biceps. Well, uh, who knows under that pimp suit. Check out Death Spa if you haven't seen that. Ken Foray fucking crushes it. And there's flying eels in that one too. That fucking fish ate that guy. <laughs> now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. From Beyond is an absolute blast. I liked our antagonist. I loved our protagonist. And I was completely invested in them solving the situation and getting out of it. Like, I had no idea what to expect, and I don't think you could expect what was to come. The practical effects are probably what this movie's most known for. Usually I'm not a huge fan of Lovecraftian horror, but in this you don't have to look that deep into things to kind of understand it. I mean, sure, there's probably analysis on this movie that can give you like a greater depth as to what everything actually means, but as a common man, it was very easy to digest and I was never struggling to figure out what the hell was happening. And when it came to dislikes, it was mainly like just like frivolous shit and situational like character things more so than anything that would affect my rating. So I'm gonna give this four Bondage Barbaras out of five. I was excited and worried coming into this film because whenever you enter H.P. Lovecraft, I get a little hesitant. I was overly impressed with this because I enjoyed this film from beginning to end. They did a really good job telling a story that wasn't overcomplicated. There were deeper meanings to this, but it was under Understandable. I didn't find myself bored. I didn't find myself lost. I thought the practical effects were hands down some of the best work that I've seen. It's really well done. The characters are great. The story is good. The effects are amazing. It's just a fun time. There's a few things that I can nitpick that I didn't necessarily like with character decisions and plot points, but I don't think that's gonna take anything away from the film. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film four and a half next American Ninja Warriors out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. 
If you haven't and you do want to check it out, links are in the description. And if you want the opportunity to recommend a movie for us to review, check out the Patreon link, also in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything Bloodbath and beyond.